Maps I find sad. I was gonna record my usual map video this week, but when I logged in and had a look at the most popular maps this month, understandably, because of the stuff that's happening in Ukraine and Russia, a lot of the subject matters of these maps are quite heavy. So at first I thought, maybe I should just skip the map video and I should do something else, something a bit lighter. But then I thought, maybe the fact that there is some sad stuff happening in the world right now should, if anything, give me more of a reason to record this video. Because the more awareness there is of the ugly things that are happening in the world, the more likely those ugly things will change and they'll improve. So yeah, some of the maps in this map video might be a little sadder than normal. What I'm gonna do is 100% of all of the ad revenue that this video makes will be donated to the Ukrainian Red Cross. And I also released an extra normal Jack Sucks of Geography video yesterday, just in case you'd rather watch that instead. Estimate of areas of Ukraine captured by Russia since fighting began this morning. That's a lot of territory and this was six days ago when this was posted. The thing is, Europe is so small that this is all happening very close to here. Morocco is experiencing the worst drought in decades. So this is literally just one year's difference and there is so, so much less green. That is crazy. Countries named in my history book. Whoa, Central and South America do not deserve this. So the history books is a Netherlands school book. Interesting. Same in the UK. I learned little to nothing about South America apart from a little about the Aztecs. Problem we have in Europe is so much stuff happened in the 20th century alone and it's so well documented that it just dominates history lessons entirely. Yeah, that is true. I think that's a real problem with school history. In school, I really didn't learn anywhere near enough about all of the horrible things that us Europeans have done. And I really feel like that needs to change. Which countries in Europe condemned the Ukrainian attack? So that's what, all 47 countries other than Belarus and Serbia and obviously Russia. I feel like I kind of suggest maybe you're doing something wrong there. Here is a circle of 5,000 kilometers radius with Paris at its center. Oh, this is a nice way to demonstrate the Mercator projection. From Paris to this little dot in the Atlantic Ocean, that's 5,000 kilometers. But this other line to the top of Greenland is also 5,000 kilometers and it's like three times as long. Oh god, do not like the look of that. Male body hair density across the world. Let's get zoomed in. Oh god, there's a nipple. Have they put the nipple on top of Nepal? Is that what they've done there? So that's really interesting. I didn't realize how hairy Europeans were. I'm not a very hairy person other than me big tall. So I guess living in Europe, I'm a bit of a minority. But uh, uh, yeah, so we've got a lot of hairy Mediterraneans. <laughs> And that's very interesting how little body hair people have in this part of Africa, apparently. It's a disgusting map to look at, but it's interesting nonetheless. By the way, a quick opportunity just to say if you want to help me get to half a million subscribers on this channel, that would be amazing, so just check if you've clicked the big red button yet. Thank you. I did a detailed hand-drawn map art. Pen for scale. That's bloody detailed. This is a pen. Look at all your little bushes, and you've got little cars, and you've done a little bus there. Oh, that's delightful. Countries with mono-ethnicity. So if it's black, it means 85% of the population is a single ethnic group, which is most countries in the world. Interesting. Egypt slash Vietnam. Hang on a minute. They've shoved Vietnam on top of the River Nile. For some reason, the shape lines up perfectly. That's weird. Ukraine USSR breakaway vote 1991. Right, so they held a referendum and overall 92% of the Ukrainian population decided they no longer wanted to be part of the USSR. And that was 1991. That was like 30 years ago. Arrests of anti-war protesters in Russia in the past two days. Whoa, let's enlarge that. So numbers are low in this area just because there's not really much going on. But in Moscow, we can see a thousand Russians protesting. I mean, that's so sad, isn't it? They're protesting against what their own rulers are doing, putting themselves at risk in the process. It's very inspiring to see, but it's scary and it's worrying at the same time. What every state is best at. Oh, this one needs some enhancing. Apparently, California have got the most breastfed babies in America. Biggest penises. How did you gather all of this data? Most lighthouses. Biggest cheese producers. Hawaii is the state in America where you're least likely to collide with a deer. Feel that makes sense. For those wondering where Old Zealand is, it's in the Netherlands and it's called Zealand. Yeah, that makes sense because if you didn't know, it was the Dutch that originally claimed that land that became New Zealand. Isn't that mad people did that? They were like, yeah, we'll have this. Oh, there's, there's people here, alright, nah, we'll have this, thank you. Kid-friendly curse words in different European languages. Right, I'm sure none of these maps are actually at all accurate. The UK's kid-friendly curse word is flip. Fair enough. Oh, look at Germany's. Scheiben Klegster, which translates as window pane glue. What are you going on about? What is this map? Countries who are feminine, pink, or masculine, blue in French. Oh God, feminine and masculine languages. So I've been learning German for the past like month, right? I did not know when I picked German that I'd have to mess with the masculine and feminine. I can't believe that every animal and place and job has like a different word for the, depending on if it's feminine or masculine or neutral, and you're just meant to remember them all. I can't do it. 
It's so hard. By the way, I'm aware I'm being completely ignorant right now. I'm sure English does very similar things as well, but I just don't notice because I speak English. The current state of Ukraine as of midnight. Oh, God, it's so scary. We've got Russian military coming in. We've got missiles, combat. Ah, oh, that's so sad. We've got a number of dead, a number of injured. I just hope things improve. So I'm recording this like four days before it will come out. Hopefully things have gotten better rather than worse, but uh, we will see. Abortion rights in Europe. So abortion's legal in most countries, excluding Poland, where it's illegal overall, unless for certain circumstances. And that's the same in Cyprus, but then in Malta, it is completely illegal no matter what, which is very, very dodgy. There are some horrible situations that can be created there. Is there a story as to why Malaysia is shaped like this? Well, I've never thought about it so far, but I guess how segmented they are is a bit odd. It's similar to Indonesia as well underneath. Anyway, I'm sure the commenters of Reddit will reliably inform us. The Federation of Malaya got its independence in 1957. In September 1963, the then crown colonies of Singapore, Sarawak and North Borneo joined Malaya to become Malaysia. But then two years later, Singapore was kicked out. East Malaysia has such a different vibe to the peninsula. Apparently, East Malaysians can freely work in West Malaysia, but West Malaysians have to get like special permits if they want to work in East Malaysia. All bike paths in the Netherlands. Simple map, but still fascinating. That is epic. So basically, you can bike everywhere. That's what that means. Why is your country not in the EU? Good question. The most popular boy name in each state, 2020. So it's basically just Liam and Oliver. Go on, Henry, though, doing things different. Isn't it interesting how just completely unoriginal we all are? We're all just following the same patterns. Although I suppose, in all fairness, to qualify as the most popular name, there only has to be like, you know, 5% of people named Oliver, providing that all of the thousands of names spread out and make the other 95%. And what I mean by that is, for example, Smith is the most common surname in the UK, but there's only 500,000 out of like 70 million. And I'm assuming this is a similar setup. Average flag color by latitude. Isn't that interesting how there's no anomalies that we can notice anyway? Maybe because there's so many countries on each line, they all just merge together. You know, like when you put all of the paints together and it just makes brown every time. Developed countries, prison populations. Nice one, US. I'd maybe question that. Oh, airstrikes in the last 48 hours. Dozens of Russian airstrikes in Ukraine. Israeli airstrikes in Damascus. 37 Saudi airstrikes in Yemen. And a US airstrike in Somalia. So Ukraine obviously getting lots and lots of coverage at the minute. But it's kicking off in other places in the world as well. And it's definitely sad how little coverage some of these events get. This is a great map. Here is everyone who has emigrated to the US. Oh, this warrants full screen. This is going to be interesting to look at. We're starting in Europe, 1820. People are moving over to the US. People from now Canada moving as well. A lot of stuff happening from Europe just over and over again. 1845. Oh my god, Canada's turning red. Whoa, China's doing some stuff. Total migration, 2 million already. Russia's coming into play. We've also got Sweden and Norway. And uh, yeah, Italy have now joined the boat. We're about to reach 1900. So the top countries at this point are Italy, Germany, and Russia. I didn't know that Russia had had a big immigration to the US uh, historically. We've also got Mexico getting in on things that I'm more aware of. Mexico have now taken the number three spot. Total migrants is apparently 600,000 in 1930s. It's just a very similar pattern forming. Uh, Canada, United Kingdom, and Germany then Germany, Canada, and Mexico. I wonder if anything's gonna change in the last like 60 years. Yes, United Kingdom have now become the number three spot. Wait, it's changed completely. Mexico, Philippines, and Cuba. That was in 1970s. I honestly don't know what that references either. Whoa, hang on, we're starting to get a lot of activity from South America and Africa as well. Even India jumping in. A lot of migration there. 1999, the millennium's hit. Total migration, 10 million in that decade. Wow, that was interesting. That must have been hard to put together. Whoa, how West Berlin appeared on a 1988 East German map. As if everything within the Berlin Wall just got blocked out. That looks mad. Okay, let's end off on this. Very impressive. Map showing Netherlands progress in flood management. This is what Netherlands looked like in 1300. And then this is what it looks like 700 years later. And you can see they've managed to recover so much land using flood management tactics, which is very impressive because that's a big, big area. Okay. Okay, on that note, we're gonna end off this video. Remember, any money this makes will go to the Ukrainian Red Cross. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and it might spread the reach of the video a little bit further. Thanks, hopefully, I'll be back next week with something a bit lighter. See you later.